Hey guys, welcome back to the Timber Forge. Today I'm bringing you a video on how to troubleshoot and become more self-sufficient when creating your own resource packs and data packs. By the end of this video, you should be able to check if your packs are properly loaded by the game with various commands, narrow down very large issues into very specific issues, how to avoid having these hard to find issues in the first place with frequent testing, how to find NVT data to check syntax and make modifications using slash data get, and finally, how to gain access to the game files to use as a reference for creating your own data packs and resource packs. And as usual, there will be a table of contents in the description below. Load checking. This tip is fairly obvious to some of you, but you need to make sure you do this. Simply checking that things are properly loaded can sometimes quickly show you what is wrong and save you tons of time. For example, after finding out that something's broken, you could type in slash function and check that your function file is actually loaded into the game. If not, then there's an error within that file which you need to narrow down. If it does load, then you know that you don't have to waste your time looking for a syntax error in that file. You can also double check other things like whole data packs with data pack list, or loot tables with loot give at s loot, and then seeing if your loot table shows up as an autocomplete option. You may need to type the first few characters of your data pack namespace to get rid of the default file suggestions. These are available commands to verify different files you may want to check. These are useful because they directly check the file itself, so instead of checking a loot table within a summon command, you can directly check if the loot table itself has an issue. The second tip is narrowing. This is when you narrow down the amount of possible issues by removing or disabling certain parts until you find the issue. Many, many of the errors that people have on the Discord server could be quickly identified if you were to take a few minutes to simply narrow down the issue. So how do you narrow issues down? What you want to do is first identify the general issue, what parts of your data pack are involved in any way with the issue you're having. Oftentimes, it's better to load check your data pack before you try to narrow an issue. After this, you might have a lot of commands to go through to check for the issue. To narrow down the issue from there, you need to 1. Cut out parts of your commands, then 2. Resave and reload, then 3. Retest, and just keep on repeating. This allows you to narrow down exactly what is causing the issue. If your function won't show up when you load check, and you cut out half of your 100 commands which may cause the issue, and the function now loads, you have narrowed down the issue to just those 50 commands that you cut out. Try to narrow down about half of what you need to go through at a time, especially if you have a lot of commands to go through. Once you narrow it down to a single command, you may need to narrow it down even more. And if this is confusing for you, I'm going to go through an example right now. Okay, so let's get on with the example of narrowing. So if I do slash function, you'll notice that under nether mobs, my main function has an error in it because it doesn't show up. This is in alphabetical order, load mob models nether core. It should be around here because it's in alphabetical order. However, it's not here, so that means there's an error in it. So I'm going to go over to the MC function file, and as you can see, this is a large file for the sake of example, but you shouldn't have a large file that's this big where you don't know where the issue is. So you should be taking small steps at a time so you could quickly undo anything if something goes wrong. But for the sake of example, I'll use this. So to start narrowing, I'm going to try cut out half at a time. So as you can see, we have the numbers that label the sides here, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but it labels how many commands I have. So I have about 138, so I'm going to cut it about in half, so I'm just going to cut from like around 70 or in this area. So I'll cut it right before the boss. So I'm going to cut all of this out, I'm just going to hit delete, then I'm going to save, and then I can go back, and I'm going to reload, and then I'll check if it is loaded. So as you can see, load mob models nether core, it's not fixed. That now means that I can do command Z or control Z, and I know everything from one through uh, 68, all of those are not causing the issue. So now I just have to go from 70 to about like 130 something. So now I'm just gonna cut out another half of these. So I'm gonna go, let's say from Six, I'll go from 70 all the way to, I don't know, here, to 70 to 100. So I'll just delete that, save, and then go back, reload, and check if the function loads. It is loaded. So I know whatever I just deleted here 
the issue is somewhere within this whole area. So 70 to 100. So now that narrowed it down a lot, I'm just going to cut it about in half again. So somewhere around here. So I'm going to go from here down to here. Delete, save, reload. And I'll check it again. And it is no longer correct, which means it is not from 70 to 85, but is from 87 to 100. So it is the, the error is somewhere in this area here. So now I could just cut it out. So I'll do this section at the top here. If I delete this, save, test, load check. As you can see, it's still not here. So I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to delete this next section. I will save. I will go back, reload. Then I will load check it again. Okay, so now we see that it got fixed. So main now shows up, which means whatever I just deleted is this. And of course, you could go double check. So now I'll save that. I just I'll save what I put back, and then I'll load check again. And that did indeed break it. It's not there. So now I know the issue is within this section that I just added back. Oops, this section. So now this is narrowed all the way down to just three commands. So I'm going to assume it's a large one since there's a higher chance of something going wrong. So now I'm going to delete that, save, go back, reload. And then I'm going to load check again. And as you can see, it works after deleting that large command. So now I narrowed it down all the way to one command. Now in order to find a specific error in this command, if you can't just skim through it and you still can't find it, now what we have to do is narrow it down just by using this. So let's break it down into the pieces. What do we have? This is a floor crafting command. So I have an execute. I have at as, at as, and at as, and I have a summon command. So I'm going to try to break it down. Is it the summon command or is it the execute? But I can't just obviously just delete summon because that doesn't work. It's not going to be running any command. So to test, I'm going to replace it with a simple command that I know will work. So run say hi. So now if I save and I go back, I can load check again. And you'll see main still doesn't work, which means that changing summon into say hi did not work which means that the error is not in summon. So I know the error is somewhere over here. So now all I could do is just cut out each part of the execute and see which part is causing it. So I'm going to go from this run to the previous at as statement. Um, so it's going at as that entity. So it's going at at as as a new entity. So I'm going to cut out this new as a new entity. I'll delete that. So it's now just at the previous entity run. So I'm just trying to cut parts out. Now it's going to be different for whatever command you have, M, but you could just apply the same concepts. And as you can see, that didn't fix it, so I know that doesn't cause the issue. So now if I go from this at as and this previous as entity, as you can see, oh wait, let's double check at yes, okay. So now if I reload and I do function, well, see, it does load, which means that little part that I just deleted caused the issue. And if you couldn't catch it, the issue was that it says as entity. Uh, that is actually an issue I made once because I was doing data get commands and you have to do data get entity. But for as, you don't have to do as entity. You just do as and then put the entity target selector. So the error is in this area and you could just look closely at this area. So all I have to do now is delete the error, save and reload. And as you can see, when I go back here, yep, it's loaded. So as you can see, I use narrowing in order to narrow down the issue out of like 150 commands. And it's very useful because you could quickly narrow down your issues instead of having to try to check every single part and try to experiment on every single part of your data pack. Just cut out half at a time and then narrow down your command to what part of the command. And it'll make identifying issues a lot easier.
In order to avoid ending up in a situation where you have an error for an unknown reason, make sure to frequently test your changes in commands or make sure to add just a few parts or items at a time to your loot table JSON files so that if something does go wrong, you can simply backtrack a few steps and undo whatever small change you just made. As you get more used to making your own data packs, you can check less frequently. More examples of frequent testing and small steps are when creating a data pack, first make and load check a basic data pack, then test the loop function to ensure proper file structure, then add a plain loot table with a single stone block, and then finally add your full loot table. If you get an error, you could just fix the last step you took. If you try to create a full data pack with a loot table from the start, and you get an error, you won't know which step caused it. Avoid this by taking steps. If you are new to data packs or anything similar to this, attempting to jump straight to the end product without testing and small steps will lead to frustration. Data get. In order to know what block or entity NBT is available to be changed with commands, you need to know how to use the slash data get command. Using this command is essential if you want to be able to understand what NBT you can use for your custom mobs, custom blocks, and custom items. In order to use the data get command, just type slash data get entity at E and then your target selector. Or you could do the same thing with blocks. If it's an item that you want to get NBT of, then just drop the item onto the ground. Just make sure to properly set the target selectors to target whatever you want to check. This is a very useful skill to be able to debug your code and check the syntax to implement NBT. And it's also useful to learn about other NBT options along with its syntax for later use. Then if you want to actually use and copy over this NBT data into your own commands, all you have to do is get the syntax from the data get command and copy it over to whatever command you are using to either target an entity with certain NBT or create or modify an entity with that certain NBT. So commands that it would be useful for are data merge or data modify or for an execute or summon command. Game files. The Minecraft jar file can be extracted in order for you to gain access to the game files. Getting access to these files is very helpful for being able to double check your own files or to create new files for data packs and resource packs. Here are a bunch of examples of things that would be made much easier with these files. Checking how different sheep colors have their loot tables implemented. Finding the parent of an item for custom model data. Finding how special items like crossbows have their models implemented checking how to add animated textures, or checking the syntax for adding block and item tags. This is an extremely helpful tool which will make you much more self-sufficient so that you don't need to rely on other people's experience. So here's how to get access to the Minecraft game files. Go over to your Minecraft folder, which you should know how to get to if you've made a data pack or resource pack before. And this is where your save file is, your resource pack folder is, and your all those stuff. So just go over to versions here. It's going to be in the bottom if you're sorted by alphabetical. Just double click on this and you'll see all of the folders for any versions you have installed. So just go to whichever version you want. I'm just going to go to the latest snapshot 20w20b. And inside of it, you'll see that there's a jar file and a JSON file. So what you can do is turn this jar file into a folder where you can actually examine it and look into it. So if you're on a Mac, right click it open with archive utility and you'll see that the folder appears. So if you're on a Windows, what you want to do is use WinRAR, 7-zip or cool file viewer. People on my server have told me that that works and they've used it before to get the Minecraft files. So that is what you can use if you're on a Windows. So after you have the folder, what you want to do is open it up and put it into list view. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of crap in here, but what you want to do is get rid of all these class folders. So I'm just going to sort by kind, and I'm just going to highlight all of these class folders. Alrighty, so now that I trashed those folders, I can go back over here, and I'm just going to clean up by name. And so now you have these nine files. So the important ones that you want are assets and data. So if you're working with resource packs mainly, then what you're going to use is assets. And if you're doing a data pack, then you want data. So when you go into assets, this should match your resource pack once you go into Minecraft. As you can see, it's models and textures. And so everything here should match. So for example, if you want to check how to add custom model data on a spawn egg, just go to models 
item and then in here you'll find that there's something that you would have to actually deal with which is the template spawn egg so if you are having issues adding your own custom model what you want to do is check the game files to see if there's special implementation so you might not think that a spawn egg has special implementation but there actually is and you have to do it differently than how you would add for example a carrot custom model data and if you're working with data packs just open up data and then minecraft and then from here this should match your either the namespace folder of your data pack or the minecraft folder of your data pack depending on if you're adding stuff or if you're overriding stuff so these files are just really useful for creating your own stuff for resource packs and data packs I hope you guys found these tips useful for becoming better at troubleshooting and becoming more self-sufficient at creating your own data packs. So stay tuned for future videos. The next video coming out is for custom attacks for the custom mob series. So stay tuned and subscribe.